In this video, we're going to be talking about the remnants of record-breaking Hurricane Agatha that will likely redevelop in the coming days into at least a tropical cyclone, and this is likely to impact South Florida later on this week into the weekend. I got all those details coming up for you guys right after this. If you guys do find this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on so that you guys won't miss future updates. Also be sure to drop a like on the video if you guys want to get this information out to other people as well. Let's get down to business. First off, we are taking a look at our two-day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida. Today is actually the first official day of hurricane season, and it will last all the way through November. And we actually have two areas of potential development on our hands, one of them here in the prime primary area of concern in a couple of days is going to be located just east of the Yucatan Peninsula right now. This is the remnants of record-breaking Hurricane Agatha. It was the strongest May hurricane to impact the Pacific coast of Mexico since records began uh, right around 1950. And this is likely to redevelop in the coming days. It will continue to move towards South Florida and will likely cause some problems up there. On the other hand, we have another very small chance of tropical development with a system located off of the southeastern United States that will continue to track northeastward, but that shouldn't cause any major problems for any areas. However, the system just east of the Yucatan could be a different story. Within the next 48 hours, there's a 70% chance that this Invest 91L will develop into at least a tropical depression. And as we get five days out from now, there's an 80% chance of that happening. By that point, it would have likely already made it through South Florida. Right now, models are actually pretty consistent that this will will make landfall in South Florida, likely right around Saturday, but we could see flash flooding impacts as early as Friday as well. That system, again, over the southeastern United States, or just off the coast of the southeast United States, I should say, will continue to track northeastward out of our way. Now, this is what the storm, or what Invest 91L currently looks like east of the Yucatan Peninsula. So, again, you see a pretty broad area here of activity. You can definitely see a little bit of spin where this low pressure is located just east of Mexico here. Uh, but this is going to continue to spin even more. And once it gets organized, it will likely develop into a tropical depression as early as maybe a couple of days from now. Um, but here's what the cyclone currently looks like. It's, again, not a tropical depression just yet, but it will likely develop into into one right now it is about a 1000 low pressure system located just east of the Yucatan it's not going to move really that much over the course of the next 24 hours or so here's the situation by about midday tomorrow the low pressure is strengthening it's not quite making landfall here I should say with the Yucatan Peninsula uh, it's just going to kind of hover right over the same area through at least late tomorrow night as we get into early Friday morning you'll notice this move a little bit further northward it's probably going to be bringing some impacts uh, for areas like northern Cuba Cuba. That will continue to move northward. Uh, by the time that we get to about midday on Friday, the Florida Keys could be looking at some impacts as well. We also are probably going to be getting some gusty winds out of this system, likely over 35 mile per hour wind gusts. This system will continue to strengthen though, uh, just southwest of Florida as we get into Friday evening. And then you'll notice as we get into Saturday, that's when this thing makes landfall in the southern portion of the Florida Peninsula. It continues to track off to the northeast. It will remain a remnant low as it gets throughout the eastern side of the Atlantic east of Florida of the Florida Peninsula here. Now here's what our different hurricane models are showing in terms of development for this storm. Right now most of the models with the exception of maybe two or three are showing this remaining under tropical uh, under tropical storm status throughout its entire life cycle at least as far out as we can see over six days out from now. So over a week out from now most models do not have this reaching tropical storm intensity it likely will be a high-end tropical depression, which is still a tropical cyclone and capable of causing impacts. Flash flooding, I think, is going to be the most major concern across South Florida. There are a few models that are trying to show this becoming a weak tropical storm. The fact that we have this one crazy model here that's showing this nearing a Cat 1 hurricane, I wouldn't even really pay attention to that. I'd, I'd pay more attention to all the models uh, below this here that are showing this being a high-end tropical depression. Very 
small chance of a low-end tropical storm. Now, here's what our global and hurricane models all put together are showing with a general track. Again, right now, it's currently located right around the eastern coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. It will likely continue to track northward, probably not going to be making landfall with Cuba, uh, but there is a chance that it comes close to it. I do expect Cuba to get impacts out of this, and it is quite likely that the south portion of the Florida Peninsula uh, is going to see landfall, and after that, it will move off of the eastern portion of the, of the Florida Peninsula, continue tracking northeastward through the central Atlantic waters. So that's kind of what the track of the storm looked like. Right now, the Weather Prediction Center is already issuing potential flash flood outlooks for Friday. So we have actually a moderate risk here of excessive rainfall, which is a 20 up to a 50% chance of seeing excessive rainfall exceed guidance for flash flooding within 25 miles of a given location. This would include downtown Miami, Florida, and all of the metro area here is under a heightened risk of seeing flash flooding just on Friday. Remember, this isn't even including Saturday yet. Uh, but the southern portion of Florida is definitely going to need to be on the lookout for some flash flooding concerns uh, even on Friday. Now, if we can combine that with Saturday and Sunday as well, we are expecting an absolute ton of rainfall for the southern por portion of Florida. We are likely to see anywhere from 4 to 10 inches of rainfall across southern Florida primarily. Uh, there could even be some spots right around Miami that are getting around 10 inches of rainfall. South through the Florida Keys, 8 to 10 inches of rainfall are going to be common. It's not going to be good at all for these areas here in southern Florida. If you do live in the Miami area or the Miami metro area, be prepared for flash flooding uh, on Friday. And it looks like into Saturday as well as this thing is making landfall because it will drop a lot of rain over it appears a pretty extended period of time. Uh, it will definitely need to watch for some uh, for some flooding concerns, at least here and there. But that is going to wrap it up for today's video. If you guys did enjoy it and you want to get more updates like this, be sure to subscribe to Phantom Weather Channel. Also, be sure to drop a like on the video if you guys want other people to get this information as well. And I also go live pretty frequently for some in-depth severe weather forecasting, so be sure to turn those notifications on if you want to get updates like that as well for severe weather and tornado outbreaks. But until the next video, stay safe, and I'll talk to you guys back here next time.